Benjamin for beginners. Defending against the four move checkmate. Hello everyone, I'm Joel Benjamin, and this is Benjamin for Beginners, a series of instructional videos designed for beginning players. In the first two lessons, we tackled basic checkmates, first with the queen and then with the rook. As the queen checkmate is probably the most important skill for a beginning player, I think next to that is to understand what to do about the four move checkmate. And that is going to be the topic of today's lecture. Now, I teach this to you not because I want you to try to win your games in four moves. And you're going to find that it may work a couple of times, but when you play better players, it does not. And you need to really learn the strategy of the game. But first things first, you need to know how to prevent the four move checkmate because otherwise you can find your game is over before it even gets started. Now the first thing to know not only about the four move checkmate, but all other early attacks is that when you start the game, the, the place where you're most likely to get attacked for black is the F7 square and for white the f2 square. Okay. Now my uh, teaching colleague at Kids Chess Network, Sophia Road, came up with the term for these these pawns and these squares called the tickle spot or the tickle pawns. And uh, that's of course very good for kindergartners or first graders. Obviously if you're an older player, just think of this as your weak point. This is where you can be attacked very early on. And to get the four move checkmate, that is where the attack is going to take place. Okay, so let's get into some moves now. E4, this is the way that most people start the game, especially if you're a beginner. This is how you're likely to begin your games. I recommend it, and your opponents probably will as well. And e5, black is also playing a nice pawn move in the center, getting ready to bring pieces out. Now, if white wants to do the four move checkmate, it involves attacking with the bishop and the queen. First, let's consider what happens if the bishop comes out, bishop c4. Now, this is actually a better move than bringing the queen out. But in a lot of ways, it's very easy to deal with in terms, at least, of avoiding the form of checkmate. Because black has pretty much a perfect move here, and that's knight f6. And once black plays that, there's really no way for white to get at that f7 pawn, at least with the queen. If white plays queen to h5, it's just hanging. We're just going to take it off. That would be very foolish. If white plays queen f3, the queen cannot see its way to the f7 pawn with the knight blocking it, and there shouldn't be any problems. So bishop c4, knight f6 is a very simple solution, and if for whatever reason you don't play knight f6, you play a move like knight to c6, then we're going to actually uh, transpose into our main variation. So let's consider the move queen h5. Now, if you've ever had any instruction, I'm sure you've been told not to bring the queen out too early. And usually it is a bad idea. If the opponent plays properly, the queen coming out is not good. And the reason is because the queen is so strong that any piece that chases it, the queen has to run away. The queen cannot afford to trade itself for anything less than a queen, really. So queen h5, white is really risking a little bit by bringing the queen out. That's, that being said, it can still be dangerous if we don't handle it properly. 
Now, the first thing to notice is that when the queen comes out on the move two, it is not yet threatening this pawn in f7. We don't have to panic about that checkmate. It's not happening yet. Actually, let's look to see what white is threatening now on the next move. It's not actually f7. It's e5. White is threatening to take that pawn in e5. Now, if you don't happen to notice that and you play a move like knight f6 and white takes on e5, it's not actually the end of the world because even though you've lost a pawn, here as black you're doing some very good stuff. You're bringing your pieces out, your minor pieces out, and you're getting ready to castle. But if black wants to deal with what white is actually threatening now, then the move to play is knight to c6. This not only defends the pawn in e5, but it does so with a move that black wants to do anyway, because that's a very good square for the knight to come out to into the center where it's controlling a lot of squares. Now comes bishop c4, and this is the moment of truth. White is threatening a checkmate on f7. Well, another term that I learned from Mrs. Rode is that the form of checkmate can be, can be referred to also as the not paying attention checkmate. Because really, once you learn it, it should be easy to spot. White is not really doing anything to cover up his intentions. He's coming right out with the queen and the bishop and double teaming on f7. So you have to know a little bit about how to defend against threats. Okay. Now, black has several ways to do it. The move that I don't like so much that I see from time to time is knight to h6. Now, this does defend the mate. If white takes an f7 with either piece, he's just going to lose the queen. But what I don't like is, well, there are two things. First of all, I don't like putting a knight on the side of the board. There are all these old sayings, knight on the rim, sure to get a trim, that kind of thing. Well, you know, if white, let's say, pushes up the d-pawn, d3 or d4, then he has an idea of taking that knight. And that can not only mess up black's position, but if black isn't careful about defending f7, it could put that four move checkmate right back on after the bishop is captured. For instance, let's just show a sample variation like this. And we see this no longer defend, defender of the f7 square. Now, another move that I often see, which is a definite no-no, is knight f6. And this move is sometimes played, I think, because some players are just looking to attack that queen and win that queen and not thinking where it's actually going. You always have to ask yourself what your opponent is trying to do. To knight f6, the queen just kind of curves right past that knight and it's mate. Don't let this happen to you. Instead, uh, a move which uh, I find perfectly acceptable is queen to e7. And the one thing about queen e7 is that this defends the mate, whether the white queen is attacking from h5 or from f3. So it's a pretty solid move. And black can follow up with knight f6, chasing away the queen on the next move. Now, the move that most teachers like to recommend here, and it probably is the best move, is to go pawn to g6. Now, note that there's more than one way to defend against a threat. The moves knight to h6 and queen e7 that we've seen, and even queen f6, that gets the job done as well. All these moves defend the threat by bringing a piece to protect the f7 square. And remember, in order to take something safely, you need more one more attacker than defender. Here, there's one, two attackers, and one, two defenders. So if white takes on f7, at the end of all this, black has come out winning a bishop. White gets a pawn for it, but that's not at all enough compensation. 
Another way to defend is by blocking a piece's view of, of the piece that it's attacking. And what I mean is the queen was attacking f7. The queen can't hop over that pawn on g6. It no longer sees that pawn. So that defends the pawn. Now, the tricky thing here is that white is going to come around again and try to attack from f3. Okay, and even though you avoided the four move checkmate, there can still can be that four move check, five move checkmate if you're not careful. You need to defend f7. And again, we can defend that by bringing out the knight to block the queen's view of the f7 pawn. And now we are pretty darn safe against the checkmate on f7. If white is really, really stubborn, he might try to, to attack f7 again. And here we can defend it very easily with queen e7. Although if we really want to get fancy, probably the move knight d4 works well for white, for black, because even though white gets to take this pawn, he can find himself surprisingly losing the bishop as the queen gets chased away from the, the defense of the bishop the king is going to take the bishop next move. So the bottom line is that by paying attention to what our opponent is doing, it is actually very easy to defend against the four move checkmate. Now, let's just back up and do, do this one more time to make sure that we understand what's going on. One mistake that I've seen way too often from uh, beginning players is in this position, I often see the move g6. Now, I think that part of that is not paying attention to what white is actually threatening, the pawn on e5. After queen takes e5 check, white is actually going to win this rook in the corner. That's a pretty bad way for black to start the game. But I think that another problem is that some players make this mistake because when they learn how to defend against the form of checkmate, they remember that they're supposed to play g6. They might forget what position they're supposed to do it in, though. Yeah, we only played g6 when the bishop was on c4 and the knight was on c6 because there white could not play queen takes e5 check. The basic lesson from all that is that you need to really learn this and not memorize it. You need to remember why the moves are played and not just try to remember, oh yes, I stopped that mate with g6 or I stopped that mate with, with knight f6. Okay, You have to play the moves that meet the demands of the position. For instance, if white plays e4, e5, bishop c4, let's say you played knight c6 and white played queen f3, again, if you play g6, you're going to get checkmated because white is not threatening that pawn from h5, he's threatening it from f3. So here you would need to play the move knight f6, that would be the best thing to do, and you come out in a very good situation. So basically, as long as you know what your opponent is trying to do, you're familiar with it, and you're paying attention, that's the most important thing, the four move checkmate is not going to get you. Now remember, as I said, the F7 pawn is your weak spot, so there will be times that your opponent will try to checkmate you on F7 with a queen, maybe backed up by a knight sometimes. After learning about the four move checkmate, that kind of thing should never happen to you. You should always be alert to attacks on f7 before your king gets castled. You should be ready for that coming. And if it happens to you, it's because you didn't pay enough attention. But as long as you are, this is not going to hurt you. And the other side of that is, if you try to win with the form of checkmate, it might work for you a few times, but eventually you're going to play someone who's too good for that and sees it coming. And then you might be in trouble because you don't have a plan B. You know, if you just 
if your whole strategy is to win in four moves and you don't learn good strategy of where to place your pieces and what to do with them, you're not going to be ready. So rather than go for the four move checkmate, I recommend that you actually bring your pieces out, develop your pieces in a very sensible way. And in the next lesson, I'm going to talk about how to do that. Okay, so that's it for this time. I'm Joel Benjamin. I'm looking forward to you joining me on the next installment of Benjamin for Beginners.